another one, you bastard. Brought to you by supporters who probably have better taste than this schmuck. Hasbro. Airlines. Departing. Generation 1. Airstrip. Touching down. 20 minutes later. At Generation 1. Airstrip. Because if it's outside. G1. It's not worth bloody visiting. Anyone who spent even a small amount of time in the fandom recently will probably recognise that Hasbro has been having problems with designing female Transformers for collector markets. Lines aimed at younger audiences have been doing quite well as of late, potentially indicating a higher level of maturity in their marketing departments. But for collector grade stuff, ever since the Prime Wars trilogy rolled onto the scene, things have been kinda sh. Hey, remember how much everyone loved the Pot Pie Moonracer molds? Well, here it is again, only this time it doesn't combine, so there's no excuse for its shittiness. Buy it thrice over like you did with Ortho, you f***ing wankers. Earthrise didn't fare much better. Actually, no, that's not true. Earthrise plunged into the abyss with arguably the worst excuse for a Transformer in recent memory. I mean, I don't care about Backpack Kibble personally, but this isn't Backpack Kibble. This is just an action master with a campsite on its back. Things weren't looking good until Kingdom rolled around. Right out the gate, we were graced with not one, but two fantastically designed female beast formers. Haztak were finally listening, and things were finally looking promising. No more ridiculous backpacks, no more half-assed transformations, because every fembot needs to have a waist thinner than my patience for crypto bros. No more rickety joints because every body part needs to be the thickness of a twig. Then this thing rolls onto the scene and oh, oh dear, maybe that progress wasn't so consistent after all. This one's a hard one to cover. I'm finding myself incredibly conflicted because I can see so much good but also so much jank. So ultimately I feel I need to do what I always do when I can't figure out what to think about a figure. Put my thoughts to the page and clear my head in the process. Greet Greetings Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and today's diagnosis pertains to Legacy Prime Universe RC, or I suppose more colloquially known as Legacy. Name trademarked by Perspective End. Thanks mate, we kinda need a marker because they removed the f number codes with this new line. Come on mate, those codes were a great way of identifying figures. They sounded really cool too. Seems like the Studio Series core class figures are dropping them as well. Doesn't bode well for the future. But enough contextual baggage for RC, let's instead discuss contextual baggage for RC. When this figure was first revealed in an admittedly pretty good livestream for its time, RC definitely received the most criticism. Uh, back to the f backpack thing again. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, it's better than Earthrise RC, but everything's better than Earthrise RC. It's not really high bar. Firstly, the kibble management didn't appear to be that well thought out, and stock photos made it seem as if this figure had mandatory parts forming, the likes of which would make Cliff Jumper cry himself to sleep at night. The aesthetic choice was also brought into question, because whilst Bulkhead wore the G1 style quite well, at least better than Digibashes and weird 3P exclusives basing themselves off Grapple, RC seemed a bit weird. And as for the engineering, well, nobody truly knew what it was going to feel like in hand. Hell, even though I ended up handling a stolen factory sample that a friend had purchased, I didn't know what it was like because the QC was f***ed to the point of disabling the transformation, leading to the hypothesis that the sample seen in stolen toy reviews are QC rejects. Essentially, the spine had moles flash that rendered the rotation unusable, so prior to LEGO C's release, the perception was mostly negative. Which actually came out though, well, damn, it was all over the place. Some people love her, some people think she's a crime against humanity, some people think she's sexy. We don't talk about those people. Either way, it's not easy to determine what kind of collector will fall on what part of the enjoyment spectrum. I can at least go over my shitty opinions though, so let's jump into this shit. In motorcycle mode, Prime Universe RC exists in this weird middle space between messy and cohesive. From most angles, she looks like a pretty decent motorcycle. However, get closer and you'll quickly realise what everything is trying to be. I mean, the first thing that makes herself known when getting up close and personal is the fact that the arms are just chilling here at the back. I commend them for hiding the hands decently with a small shimmy of the forearm pads, but the shoulders are rather obnoxious. Above them is pretty janky too, with the thighs on display pretty prominently. And while I like the cohesion between them and the backpack chunk, I can't say I'm a fan of the placing of the groin up there, both in concept and execution. Remember those creepily sexual ONAs with those girls that turned into cars with their lingerie on show? This is basically that. Now the thing with most vehicle modes is that they typically tend to put all the cool shit on the top and all the garbage on the bottom, because honestly, who displays their figures from the underside? <laughs> 
This is so good. Oddly enough, RC is the exact opposite, because the underside is strangely clean as a whistle. The legs blend in extremely well, even with the robot mode paint applications peeking out. In fact, I go as far as saying they blend in precisely because of those paint apps. They end up looking like engine detail, at least as someone who's not very knowledgeable about motorcycles. You also get a kickstand, which is nice. Glad this edition has been one of the more consistent inclusions on motorcycle transformers in recent memory. Oh no! The back wheel is also done damn well. You get some lovely asymmetry with the pipe at the back, something that may seem trivial, but is often overlooked on cycle formers. Is that a colloquialism in this fandom? F*** it, armor make it a colloquialism in this fandom. The engine details come across really nicely, and I love how they've added a blue trim to the wheels too. Would have loved to have seen these done in a lighter blue for that neon cyberpunk cred, but I get that adding another colour to the paint layout would have f***ed with the budget, especially with these panels being painted completely in blue, which we'll get to. The detail carries over to the front wheels too, along with the addition of extra silver. Would have been cool to see both wheels get those paint applications, but it's nice to see nonetheless. You also get rotation here, something that's really a coin toss on mainline cycle formers. Above it is pretty neat too, with plenty of paint picking out the extra details. They absolutely could have skimped on these front lights, and as far as I know this yellow isn't seen anywhere else on the figure, but hey, we got them. Also interestingly, the clear plastic is actually a separate piece from the rest of the chassis. This isn't something I typically care about, especially since Legacy's clear plastic seems a billion times more durable than what we've gotten in previous years. But hey, I know a lot of people have been clamouring for this. So at least the designer listened here. Goes to show that whoever worked on this at the very least listened to fandom feedback. Even if it didn't work out in all regards, at least they put the extra mile in places like the mirrors, which feature an extra coat of black on the outside, so that the clear plastic is still visible from the back. There's a lot of little things with this mode that will get fans into this sort of stuff in a real happy state. Unfortunately, much like the top section, I feel a lot of the problems lie with the bigger picture. It's commendable that they've put a lot of effort into the front section, but it doesn't really have much of a personality beyond it's a motorcycle. The contouring doesn't seem purposeful, and as such, a lot of the scrappy bits end up feeling more prominent than they actually are. Compare that to Bulkhead, who has a big-ass front cab to draw your attention to, or Laser Prime, with a mean front section that distracts from the obvious Earthrise Prime legs at the back. These are points of interest that draw your attention away from the less than desirable parts of the figure. Not to say the rest of these figures are bad in any way, but you get the idea. RC doesn't have this, and as such, the wonky sections seem more in the way. Also, why are the side panels painted in blue? Like the front I get, you've got to have the colour separation with the black, but the sides seems a bit excessive. Although thankfully not as excessive as Laser Prime. Where's the blue? Where's the blue? Where's the blue? The colour matching is already on point, so it doesn't really make sense to me. Although potentially this is for the best, given some plastic choice issues we'll cover in the robot mode. Still, as far as the vehicle mode is concerned, this is weird. Not bad per se, but a bit of a waste of paint in my mind. The only reason I can think of is due to the eventual redeco, which according to leaks is said to be road rockets. I'm guessing it's so that the Red's colour match there? Come to think of it, that's probably why the front looks so bland to begin with. It's almost an amalgamation of the two windshields from both characters' alt modes. Can't say I'm a fan of this approach. Happy to see G2 get its due, but not at the behest of Prime fans. So in the end, this figure does a lot of good, but you really have to dig deep to find it. Its positive qualities are hiding in plain sight, and it takes careful analysis to uncover them. Meanwhile, the major issues make themselves known quite quickly, and at a cursory glance, they appear to overtake this mode. I can tell whoever designed this put as much effort in as possible, but sadly it feels like it fell short. This is a blundering mode, and I feel anyone who's a fan of Prime RC's alt mode or people who have a high level of knowledge about motorcycles will find themselves disappointed. Of course, if you're neither and love to relish in the small details, you might find this surprisingly neat. Can't say I fall into this category, but I must admit, it's not that bad. From my perspective, it's serviceable, albeit a little bland. It's well-sized for a deluxe, although obviously as it's going for robot mode scale, it's not going to line up with anything this side of Beast Wars retracks. That usually comes with the territory for cycle formers though, especially Prime RC. Oh, and the weapon storage is sh but honestly, that's neither here nor there. So yeah, the all mode is just kind of, eh, not too bad in the end, I suppose. Honestly, I don't find much point dwelling on it. Anywho, let's get out of here. The problem with the transformation here is that it constitutes of so many good ideas, but they're all executed rather poorly. You can tell the designer had a lot of fun figuring out where everything was supposed to go, but with those old rickety joints that we always see on fembots, a lot of these ideas just fall flat. It's got a great general layout that is handled not very well. Now, Aside from taking the weapons off, the first thing you want to do is remove these side panels here. And can you already see the first problem? Yeah, the entire alt mode is basically held together by these two panels. Sound familiar? Hmm, it's almost like those giant backpacks that made all the other fembots.
fembots so frustrating? Have they learned nothing from the other fembots? They've basically taken out the backpack, but kept everything that made the backpack so frustrating. Like, these legs don't actually peg together at all. They're just wobbling around, pegging into these, and the whole torso is just pegged into that. It's not satisfying. Now, the back wheels are annoyingly tight. Getting them aside is a bit difficult. Also, they're pegged in really specifically with three prongs like that, and I'm not a fan of that. I reckon putting all of the pegs on one side and all of the slots on the other would have really made this thing feel better. But no, you gotta alternate it and it makes this very annoying. Anywho, the wheels rotate onto the sides of the legs. You remove the arms and rotate them up to the sides like so. And then this part is pretty cool. You actually bring the legs all the way out to the side there and you can see how the leg struts work. From here, you rotate this section around, use the ball joints to rotate this around and be very careful because the ball joint is not actually pinned. It's just on a friction joint there. And that's really annoying because it can fall off really easily. Anywho, you push the torso into there. There's a nice solid click as you do that. Fold up the groin section. Rotate these sections around. And this should be cool on paper. Basically, you take this leg strut and you rotate it up. So these legs rotate around like so. And then you can bring up the feet, including the heels over there. Like that should be a fantastic transformation sequence for a fembot. But because all the parts are so spindly and rickety, it just feels wrong. It doesn't feel satisfying like any of the other legacy figures so far. Anywho, the shoulders lock into the tops like so. You rotate the arm sections down like that and do be careful, some of these arm sections do fall off pretty easily. Depends on what the copy is, but I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Your mileage may vary. Slide up these panels here and that could be really, really cool. It could be a fantastic transformation part for the arms. But no, there's no locking mechanism, they just kind of slide awkwardly to the end and don't even cover up the hands properly. Big missed opportunity. And then the backpack kind of rotates around in on itself and down like that. And the wings rotate into the back like that. You can rotate the wheel to the side or leave it as is up to you. And there are other configurations for the backpack but we'll get into those later. Last but not least, you rotate the head around and we're done. So yeah, there are a lot of really, really cool steps here with RC on paper at least. The way the legs transform, the way the backpack rotates around, the way the arms slide, it should all be really, really satisfying, but without any solid joints, it just isn't. It's rickety and frustrating, much like every other fembot Hasbro has done, aside from the ones we got in Kingdom. It's going back to the same old sh** and it's as frustrating as ever. Ultimately, what frustrates me the most is that the goddamn combiner limb ended up with a better transformation. For all intents and purposes, this guy should be simple because he has to combine, but nope, he transforms amazingly. This is an amazing conversion. And this guy got the cool transformation and this gal didn't. That to me just seems like a great big pile of wasted potential. Now, the Ultimate and Transformation may have had a bunch of issues in their own rights, but in terms of fandom controversy, nothing compared to the reception of the robot mode. When this thing was first announced, people hated the way this looked, and I can see why. In essence, they've taken the incredibly iconic Prime RC design and genericized the hell out of it. This doesn't look very much like a main character from any particular Transformers series. This looks more like a background Genericon, which is ironic considering the quality seen on many recent background team members in the War for Cybertron trilogy. The head sculpt has the trademark crests and side spikes, but all of the personality is lost, in a way that has seen largely fantastic head sculpts, especially on the other Prime Universe frontrunner. This feels like a massive step down. It's not the worst head sculpt I've seen, but since the start of the War for Cybertron trilogy, Haztac have been doing fantastic head sculpts 99% of the time. This was even the case in Studio Series. Once 2019 kicked off, the head sculpts were instantly elevated. As such, this seems pretty uncharacteristic of them. Also, quick side note, she has light piping, but it kinda sucks. The torso doesn't fare much better. From a distance, it looks like a flat board of nothing. I've seen some people complain that the hips are below the crotch plate, but I can't say I even noticed nonsense like this when I can barely make out anything on the torso to begin with. Thing is though, there is actually a lot of detail on this. Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't spread over every egg. The designers have legitimately been really meticulous with crafting the details here, so that it's not just the typical boring polygon they go for. In the recent Fan First Tuesday livestream, which was actually surprisingly fantastic, we got a glimpse at the design process for this figure, and were privy to pictures of the resin prototype. Look at this. Look at this. This is awesome. Why does a mine look like that? Simple. 
the plastic used. The blue paint is secretly covered in a bunch of wonderfully sculpted mechanical detail, but the plastic chosen washes it out and makes it lose its luster. It's probably why the head sculpt looks as bland as it does too, since the face on the prototype seems to look fine. This is something I've taken issue with in the past, most notably with Siege Optimus Prime, but also more recently, Kingdom Blaster, who I suppose also technically counts as Legacy 2. Fortunately with him, the yellow chest draws enough interest to make you gloss over the red plastic. With RC, there's sadly nothing to do the same. I genuinely think this is why RC looks as generic as she does. I know a lot of people are saying it's because of the road rocket pre-tooling, but honestly, I'm not seeing much DNA in this mode. It's really just the front of the motorcycle on the vehicle side of things and the potential parts forming wheel placements, so I truly think the plastic is responsible here. Not that I think that's the only issue on show though, oh no. As alluded to in the vehicle mode, the legs are expertly designed. The paint is plentiful and in isolation, the detail looks fantastic. They've even masterfully incorporated the transformation hinges into the design so that it just looks like piston detail. Even the transformation hinges blend in seamlessly into the backs of the legs. But honestly, that's not something I typically care about because who displays their figures from the back? <laughs> Oh my god, this is perfect! On the topic though, why aren't the wheels on the back? Or why haven't they migrated into the insides? Or why don't they compress further? I'm all for incorporating vehicle kibble in creative ways wholly separate from the source material, but this isn't clever. This just seems lazy to me. Taking a look at the concept arts, I can see what they were going for, but it just wasn't realized at all. It baffles me further when you realize Hasbro did this right almost two decades ago with Cybertron Ransack. Although sadly I can't show comparisons with my copy due to frustrating external circumstances. As a result though, all those awesome leg paint apps go largely unnoticed. All your attention is drawn to the wheels, completely overshadowing any of the subtler details with their big ass conformite your pen logos. And no, I do not apologize for my butchered pronunciation. At least I tried. With how obnoxious these are, you don't even notice that she has ankle tilts. They went to all the trouble of engineering that articulation, and you subconsciously never get to see it with how these are designed. Matter of fact, this figure has a great level of articulation. Everything here is present and accountable for when considering the price point, but with a lot of the flat detail and janky kibble, she never comes across as a truly poseable figure. Once again, it's clear the designer puts 110% effort in, but it just gets bogged down with frustrating nonsense. Also, side note, apparently the waist has some pretty substantial QC issues. I got lucky this time, probably to balance out the other issues I've had this year, but I've heard of many cases where the waist just won't plug in. Make sure you buy from a reliable source with good consumer law adherence. If I had to take a guess why this figure feels so flat in terms of posing beyond the plastic issues, it's probably the backpack. In its stock configuration, it's pretty bulbous and tacked on. It really makes her feel like she's a shell former with the entire alt mode on her back. She 100% isn't, as seen with the conversion earlier, but this does create the illusion of such. Now you can rotate the wings out in a sort of nod to the Legion and Robots in Disguise toys. That's Prime Robots in Disguise, not Robots in Disguise 2001 or 2015. Yep, reusing trademarks ain't confusing at all! Unfortunately, these end up sitting way too long. Low. And if you adjust the backpack to compensate, it ends up sitting even further out than it already is. Now, if you finagle the hinges a bit, you can rotate the section 180 degrees, but whoops! Now the wheel is on the top! Fortunately, you can also split these apart, and honestly, this looks pretty cool. I came across this whilst fiddling in preparation for this particular review, and honestly, this is my preferred configuration. It does sit a bit high and is really far back, but I suppose it works. At least it doesn't topple over thanks to the pretty hefty ankles. A nice change of pace for Fembots given other company's obsession with high heels. Still, I wish this mechanism was redesigned to make something like this feel more intentional. Well, that's actually not fair. There is something like this that's intentional through the use of parts forming. <sighs> Great. Just great. Okay, perhaps I should clear some things up. I don't actually hate parts forming. I think when you use it for cool weapons and shit, or with combiners and headmasters, it can work really well. What I dislike is lazy parts forming that doesn't do anything, a la that one review everyone keeps bringing up to devalue my opinion. This is nowhere near as bad as that example, but it does irk me. The wheel is easily the better of the two because it actually tries to do something. It splits into a sort of dual pizza serving tray, or I guess a drone. It's painted nicely least, I'll give them that, although I feel that paint would have been better suited on the legs. This has its own dedicated peg hole on the back of the neck, and this actually looks awesome. This gives us so much personality and even helps the posing stand out too. My main question is, why not just make this standard? Why not have the whole thing slide up into the backpack like this to begin with? Still beats the front of the motorcycle though, this thing has no pegs whatsoever. Could have made a neat shield, at least a better one than cliff jumpers, but nope. Pegs into the back or gets removed to clean it up. This piece is basically worthless. Fortunately, both cases of pass 
platforming are completely optional, but I feel their inclusion is ultimately to the detriment of this part. By adding in the extra swivels and the extra parts removal and the extra ports for the backpack to work in its extra ways, nothing really works out to its fullest potential. The backpack is essentially the jack of all trades but master to none. Some say that's better than being master to one. I say, at least in this case, that's bullshit. Personally, I'm not one to usually give a shit about backpack kibble, but when it makes this figure seem less poseable than it actually is, especially when figures with bigger backpacks seem plenty poseable, alongside the other janky kibble and the lackluster plastic... Uh, oh, that's a run-on sentence if ever I've seen one, or written one. I seem to have lost my train of thought. Still, I think I just sorted out my feelings with this. Yeah, this figure ain't great. Yay! Hooray for sorting my thoughts out. Guess I should cover the last couple of points. The weapon's stink. You get a pizza of doom that isn't even compatible with the pizza tray, and it splits and wonkily pegs onto the arms. I'm a bit annoyed that they only gave her these and nothing else, whilst G1 chunksters get their original weapons as well. Allegedly, you can get her original weapons though. Supposedly, the weapons from the red version are fully compatible. Can't say for sure though, could just be red apologists trying to trick everyone into buying those awful f things. Side note though, I found this weapon combination on Dime Chock featuring most of the clear weapons from Wave 1. I thought I'd try it out and yeah, this thing is super loose. Not a fan. Hopefully someone comes up with more solid combinations later down the line, or Hasbro releases a proper combination eventually. So yeah, this figure has a bucket load of issues. Much like the vehicle mode, there are really neat qualities hidden under the surface, such as the hidden mechanical details, secret paint applications, and admittedly pretty cool fan mode for the backpack. But it's all hidden behind layers and layers of jank. This sadly ends up cementing our RC's status as a mere troop filler, coming in at a standard size and looking decent in group shots, but not providing much character on her own. And in the most cruel twist of fate, the one get out of jail free card that could elevate this mold to proper good status has at present been denied. See, there's this thing called the black convoy effect, where a lackluster mold instantly makes up for its shortcomings once it's given a black repaint. The most recent example of this is Generation Select's DK2 Guard, a deeply disappointing mold with a killer color scheme. In Transformers, literally everything is better in a Nemesis deco. Unfortunately, according to the League Squad, for some bewildering reason, Hasbro has no current intention of releasing a Flame War deco. Yes, in spite of all their willingness to redo old Botcon stuff with modern tooling and a recent comic comeback leading to a sudden surge in popularity, probably due to waifu culture, she just isn't on the cards at the moment. Maybe this will change in the future. Powered Convoy was deconfirmed for the longest time, only for them to sneak the homage into the Shattered Glass version. People were also saying Hasbro had no intention to do Black Zarak. Then suddenly he dropped on April Fool's Day. Best prank ever. Hasbro goes where the money is, and people clearly want a flame war. As such, they may change their tune later down the line. For now though, we're left with a mold that's slightly below par. I can tell this isn't a failure derived from laziness. It's clear whoever worked on this puts a lot of effort in. It's also clear that a lot of this stuff just doesn't hit the mark. It's entirely possible that you'll disagree with me on this. Every day I'm seeing more people praising the hidden qualities, matching those tearing a toy down. It's genuinely got the makings of a cult classic, a figure fondly remembered by a sub-faction of fans that see the brilliance under the hood. For me though, it's just kind of eh. I don't find it that great, but I'm not getting very angry either. You won't find this on the worst of 2022 list at the start of next year. That list is mainly for figures that pissed me off for whatever reason, good or bad, and this figure doesn't really cause me to get super angry unless I start analysing it closely. Although I did say the same thing about MP52, so who knows. Actually, just adding this in a bit later, after going through the whole filming process, this has been a pain in the ass. Maybe I will actually end up putting this on the worst of 2022 list. I guess I'll just have to see. Either way, it's not great. But what does that say about the future of Fembot Engineering? We've made so many leaps and bounds, but are we now going backwards to the low standards of the past? Well, fortunately, this figure's place on the timeline has been properly revealed thanks to Hasbro actually getting off their ass and announcing things properly for once. Enter Deluxe Class Elite 1, a figure that from a glance looks to be absolutely divine. I'm extremely excited for this, as I am Minerva. I can finally forget the fans hobby one ever existed. Hooray! Putting Prime Universe RC alongside photos of what's to come, I can can see what's happening here. Engineering progress isn't always straightforward. Sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back. In fact, the same could be said about the Legacy line as a whole. The first wave has been decent so far, but aside from drag strip, nothing really stands out as a truly sublime figure. By contrast, wave two is like- <laughs> Legacy RC is simply a minor misstep in the long road towards properly engineered fembots. In the future, we can expect more than just one point of evolution, but we can also probably expect more like Prime Universe RC here as well. Not everything is going to work out, and that's okay because the failures of the present still stand above the failures of the past. Is this figure good? 
No, at least I don't think so. Is this figure awful? Also no. She's not indicative of the future of female Transformer engineering, and she certainly isn't indicative of Prime characters being remade in this modern style. Ultimately, that's probably why I can't hate this as much as people expect me to. Legacy isn't a dire point in the franchise like Earthrise. It's a breeding ground for creativity, and something like this simply can't cause that much anger. But as always, fan and public consciousness is a conversation, so drop your outlook on RC below. Where do you fall on the enjoyment scale? Do you despise her? Do you think she's a cult classic? Do you agree that Hasbro's lack of flame war plans are absurd, or are you a f quit who doesn't understand the glory of Bob Posting's favorite waifu? And as always, there's a context for everything. Till next time.